Hey guys, um, doing a quick video on, um, we, we spent a lot of time talking about uh, what you need to bring on the Camino, um, and, uh, but we don't really do much on what you don't need to bring. Um, so uh, it uh, basically, I'm just going to go through my uh, pack list. Um, on my pack list, I put things that are basically optional. I list them there because other people might want to bring them. Uh, but I don't personally bring them, but if you're using uh, my pack list, you can go through and decide for yourself. But, um, but I'll, I'll give the rationale behind it, because I know that I, I go back and forth on some items um, pretty frequently. I, I sort of, uh, you know, think, well, maybe I'll bring this item, but then I change my mind later. So the idea is that um, you just don't want to carry so much stuff that you're uncomfortable. Um, you know, because inevitably you're going to bring some items that you just don't want to carry and, and then you got to deal with it uh, on the Camino. And usually the way to deal with, with it when you've brought too much stuff is to, uh, is to go to CasaIvar.com uh, and, uh, sh and just ship a box of stuff to Ivar and uh, he'll hold it for you in Santiago and you can pick it up when you get there. <laughs> so. Um, so it's better, it's better to underpack because there's plenty of stores there um, where you can buy things. Um, you know, there's outfitting stores in just about every town. Uh, even some of the smaller ones where there's not much else there, there's usually a little backpacking store where you can get uh, a couple of items. Uh, so uh, anyway, I'm just going to go down my pack list and, and, um, and, and go, you know, go over what's, uh, you know, maybe not necessary. Um, so, uh, and again, it depends on the season that you're going. Wintertime has different requirements than summertime, obviously. If, if I was going in the summer, um, you know, the temperatures, there's not really a lot of air conditioning in most of the places, um, unless you're staying in hotels. Um, but most of the albergues are going to be unair conditioned, so you don't need a sleeping bag. I would just bring a silk liner. Uh, you know, and, and so again, it depends on the season. If, if and, and I may go um, uh, again in the summertime this year. Um, this trip is going to be on May 1st, so it's a little bit earlier in the season, and you do get cold weather. I've done uh, my first Camino. I started in the middle of May, and we did get some cold night, some cold nights where you got up in the morning, and it was. Uh, I think I posted in another video this, the screenshot that I took uh, in Ronces Bias where it was 39 degrees, you know, at, in the middle of the morning. So it had gotten a little colder uh, that uh, morning. So it was mid 30s, I think, and then it warmed up to like 39 and then it eventually got up into the 50s or 60s. But, uh, you know, but that was uh, May, I want to say that was May 16th. Um, you know, so I'll be going on May 1st, leaving on May 1st, and by the time my son and I get there, it'll probably be the 5th by the time we start walking. So, um, so springtime, you, you, you get some warmer days where it's comfortable to walk in shorts and you really don't need much more if you, uh, if you just have, uh, a, um, you know, kind of a light sweater and a shirt like this. I, I have my outdoor research hoodie shirts that are pretty much my staple. Um, and I wear those as a base layer. If, if I get cold, I'll put something over those, but those are my basic shirt. And then I always wear shorts. It can be 30 degrees outside. I'll wear shorts and, uh, and just bundle up on top and, and be, be just fine. And even if it's raining, I wear a swimsuit generally, something like that to walk in. Uh, and, and so I'm not dealing with uh, thick fabric that takes forever to dry. The swimsuits dry pretty quickly and they're more comfortable to wear when they're wet. So, um, so someone had asked me uh, uh, what was the brand on the swimsuits I got. Uh, they're Nike, called Nike Swim. And I think if you go to nikeswim.com, that's what was on the tag. Um, and uh, I got a black pair and a blue pair. Um, I always, when I get duplicate items, I try to get different colors so that I can keep them straight when you're fumbling with your pack and your stuff is spread out over your bed. It's nice to know which one you just wore, you know, today and which one you wore yesterday. And, and so it helps to kind of keep a good rotation. Uh, so um, first item on my pack list is the backpack. Obviously you need a backpack. You can decide uh, how big of a pack you need. Um, but uh, generally the smaller the pack, the um, lighter weight it's going to be. So and, um, and I've also kind of gone through it 
the items that you're putting into the pack, they may be very lightweight, but if they're bulky, uh, it's going to force you to get a bigger pack, which is going to be add another pound uh, to the pack itself. So like if you brought a fleece jacket that, you know, folds up to, you know, this big, you're going to need a bigger pack than if you brought a, uh, like a down jacket that packs up much smaller. So even though they may do the same job in the same temperatures, uh, one is going to force you to get a slightly larger pack. So, um, so, you know, consider bulkiness of items when you're, when you're, uh, building out your pack. Uh, okay, so backpack, you need hat, uh, sun hat. You generally need a sun hat, um, even if, uh, if it's uh, cooler weather in the springtime, um, you know, wintertime maybe not, but uh, wintertime you need, a, you know, a warm cap. But uh, um, a sun hat generally is, a, is a pretty much a necessity in most of the season. Uh, knit cap, if it's summertime, I'm not bringing a knit cap. It's gonna be way too warm. I will bring a sun hat. Um, but knit cap uh, is kind of nice to have in May and earlier, obviously winter time. That would be like your standard, you know, beanie that you'd pull down over your ears. Um, and, uh, you know, September is not necessary. October, I would say middle of October and later is probably a good idea to bring a knit cap. And um, rain jacket's another item. <laughs> if, uh, you know, it'll rain a bit uh, in May um, and maybe early June. But um, if, if I was leaving later, like the end of May, I probably would not bring a rain jacket. I would use the Camino Poncho and I would have some kind of a, you know, sweater layer that I can put over uh, my outdoor research hoodie. Um, but I wouldn't trouble myself with a rain jacket. If, it w if for some reason we got a late spring storm, I might consider buying a little umbrella on the Camino just to be able to get to the store. I don't like wearing a poncho around town once, I'm, once you know, my backpacking day is done. Um, but, uh, you know, usually you can hide out in the albergue, um, which is what you're going to do a lot of the time anyways, because uh, you've been walking for 15 miles. But, um, but yeah, so rain jacket, I personally wouldn't bring one. Um, and I'm only bringing it because I'm starting in the beginning of May and I know it'll be, <laughs> it'll be, um, probably, uh, there'll be some rain. Um, uh, a warm, let's see, a warm jacket. Um, <clears throat> you, uh, again, I, I'm, I'm opting for a sweater this time. So the way I think of it is, is layers because you get so much variety in spring. You'll get maybe some 30 something degree days, very cold near freezing. And then you'll get uh, some days that are like 60, 70 degrees. So you get a pretty wide range. And so having like a heavy, specifically a heavy jacket um, that you're only going to use once or twice is, but it's going to necessitate a heavier pack. That's maybe not the way to go. So what I do is I, I wear my outdoor research hoodie and then I have a lightweight sweater that I can put over that, um, that will handle just about any temperature you'd see in late May or June. Um, and then, uh, and then I have my little down vest uh, that I can uh, also put over that that's probably more than I need. If it does get really cold and, and, and windy, because uh, there's some places where you see a lot of the um, wind turbines, uh, so you know it's gonna get windy. So if you're in early spring and there's, you know, on the Meseta, there's, you see there's fields of wind turbines. So the wind is always kind of blowing there you need something to block the wind. So that's where the rain jacket comes in handy, even if it's not necessarily raining. Uh, so warm, uh, yeah, so a warm layer of some sort, a sweater or a fleece uh, are popular choices. Um, <clears throat> pants, um, you generally need one pair of pants. Uh, a lot of people are bringing more than one. I guess if you, if you're, if you want a pair to hike in, sometimes those can get dirty down on the, uh, on the legs, uh, if you wear them while you walk, I just wear my shorts when I walk. Um, so I just have a pair of pants for the evenings um, and uh, to get into the uh, cathedrals, you do need pants to go inside the cathedrals. So, um, but I go with one pair of pants, other people may want two, um, but you can, you can definitely get away with one. Um, and then uh, um, thermal base layer, like a, like, thermal pants or thermal shirt. Obviously, I don't need the thermal shirt because I've got a sweater and my, uh, and my hoodie shirt. Uh, but uh, if I was going in wintertime, I would bring the thermal base layer pants. Like I have uh, 
the wool um, kind of like I guess they're kind of like the legging kind of material uh, by uh, I use the ones by smart wool they're very comfortable and they you know it's wool so it holds up really well and easy to take care of so uh, yeah winter time I would bring them every other season I would not um, rain poncho uh, I just get the one on the Camino when I get there. It weighs about two ounces and you roll it up, it gets to about the size of a pair of socks and I stuff it in one of the side pockets on my backpack. So that one I definitely uh, use. Uh, the uh, warm layer shirt I already talked about, I'm bringing a sweater. Uh, shirts, um, I'm bringing basically three of my outdoor research shirts. They only weigh three ounces each. They're long sleeve, they have a hood, um, so they protect from the sun. Um, so I don't need to wear any sunscreen. I, you know, if, it, if the sun's like really behind me and intense, I'll pull the hood over and then I'll put, put my sun hat on and it's literally, you know, everything's covered. Um, you're walking from east to west, so the sun is nearly always behind you. Sometimes the trail, you know, turns, you know, north or south a little bit, but in general, um, you're walking westward and you're doing it in the first half of the day so the sun's going to be behind you on your neck so if you're if you like wearing baseball hats you if you don't have long hair you need something to uh cover back there if you if you like wearing sunscreen that's great if you don't get some kind of hood you can pull up or or you know a buff or something that you can cover the back of your neck um so uh so i bring three of those shirts uh evening shoes uh you I can imagine you could probably get away without them, but you don't want to. You want some kind of sandals or lightweight shoes. Uh, your feet need to air out, and sometimes you get a rainy day and your shoes get soaking wet, and they need time to dry out, and you need something to wear around town. So you need, you do need some kind of, uh, of, uh, <laughs> of evening shoe. And I, I've generally, I go back and forth. But I've generally brought my Keen hiking sandals because they're so comfortable and they do let my feet breathe. Um, I go back and forth whether to bring my uh, lightweight uh, shoes. They're, the brand is Hey Dude, um, and they're the, uh, I think they call them Wally Socks shoe, which is just like a super lightweight. They weigh like six ounces each, so it's about 12 ounces total. It saves about five or six ounces um, versus my sandals, but my sandals have been the thing that I've, I've brought them on every Camino. I bring them every time I travel. It's, it's hard to get away from them, even though they're heavier. Um, so we'll see when the day comes, what's in my pack, but either one of those is fine. Um, walking shorts. Uh, that's what I, I always wear. And I'm bringing two pairs of shorts. They're both swimsuits. They're the Nike swim that I mentioned earlier. And I have one that I walk in during the day. They have the built-in liner, so I don't need any extra underwear for that. They're, uh, um, they have uh, just the one pocket on the back. It's got a zipper on it, so I can put my wallet in there or whatever. Uh, they're super comfortable. I've been walking in them, and it's been raining here uh, the past couple of weeks. So I went out and walked in the rain with just my, my rain jacket and the shorts, and, uh, and they're fine. They get wet, but, they, but because they're swimsuit material, they're really thin fabric. It dries quickly, so they get a little bit wet, and they dry very fast. Um, uh, the uh, swimsuit has the uh, that really light mesh liner, which I, I like it better than a lot of uh, hiking shorts. Um, you know, the what I'm finding out is that is that hiking shorts, a lot of shorts, even running shorts now, um, they just the past few years they're making them different. They're they're making them with built-in uh, boxer briefs that has a thicker fabric. It doesn't dry as fast. So, um, but that's it seems to be what they've decided they want to do. So I've, I've had to uh, um, switch from, I used to wear running shorts because they always had the built-in, uh, you know, uh, mesh like a swimsuit, but the running shorts I would get because the, they were so ultra lightweight, they're just virtually nothing there. Um, and, uh, but it's getting harder and harder to find running shorts that don't have like the full boxer brief. Uh, so yeah, so I'm just using uh, swim swimsuit and, um, and I bring two different colors, and uh, that's fine. Uh, sleeping bag. Uh, if you're if you're going uh, June or later June, I would say June through the uh, end of September. If you're finishing up even the first half of October, you probably don't need a sleeping bag. Um, if if I was leaving June first instead of May first, I wouldn't even bring a sleeping bag. I would just bring my silk sleeping bag liner. 
Um, st uh, it used to be that every albergue provided uh, these heavy blankets. They're like these thick wool blankets or something. Maybe they're not wool, maybe they're just synthetic, but really thick, uh, heavy, like a military style blanket. Um, and it would be on every bed. And then they would have extras stacked on top of the lockers and stuff like that. The communal blankets, I'm, I don't know how often they get washed, but <laughs> you know, it's uh, the Camino, you sort of, uh, you know, that's to me, it's part of the fun is that you get used to uh, less um, sterile conditions than, than what you'd have at home. And uh, so I sort of, you know, uh, adapt and get into that and it helps me lose my anxiety over, uh, you know, over cleanliness, any obsession, like OCD kind of uh, germ phobia uh, sort of tendencies. And, and I feel better, you know, being able to shake that on the Camino. But uh, but since COVID, a lot of the albergues don't provide the blankets. I don't know if it, it's probably partly because of the uh, health uh, code requirements, but also, you know, I think once they get away from providing that and all the work that goes into it, and then you need one less employee maybe uh, to deal with blankets and it just gets easier. Um, if I was designing my own albergue, uh, I would probably have a very minimalist kind of thing because it's just easier to keep the place clean. Uh, less places for, you know, dirt and dust and whatever else to hide in. So uh, anyway, but if I was leaving June 1st, um, I would only bring my silk uh, cocoon liner and you can get those, you know, you can just look up silk sleeping bag liner and get any one of those. They, they weigh two or three ounces and uh, that's that's what I would bring. I would skip the sleeping bag. It would save a pound. Even even my ultralight bag weighs 14 ounces. So um, socks, I bring two pairs. I don't need three, but some people might bring three. They don't weigh much, so do whichever one you want, but you don't need four. If you get darn tufts there and, you know, nice uh, new pair of darn tough socks, uh, you know, a couple of pairs of those will do you fine. Uh, underwear, I only bring one pair um, because I don't wear them during the day. I wear my, you know, my my shorts have the liner built in. You don't need it with that. Um, and um, and then even I'm bringing two pairs of shorts, so I've got my pair for the evening that again has the built-in uh, liner. The, I'm going to bring one pair just because I have a pair of pants, and if I want to wear the pants but I don't want to wear the shorts underneath them, uh, which is normally what I would do, then Obviously, it's nice to have a pair of underwear laying around, but I don't really need them. Um, but they don't weigh much, so it's okay. Uh, deodorant, you need deodorant. This is not the PCT, so you do need to uh, not uh, be stinky. Uh, nail clippers. Um, <clears throat> the last uh, trip I took, I clipped all my nails before I went. Uh, I went uh, uh, in September. I think I left September 1st for the Camino and started walking on the Let's see, I started walking on the 7th, uh, but I'd done all my nails and toenails before, like the day before I left. Um, and so I didn't bring any nail clippers with me. Um, and then, uh, because you can buy them there, you go to any, any one of the pharmacies, any store, anywhere you go, has a pair of nail clippers for a few, a few euros. Um, so I thought, you know, I'll just skip it because, you know, it's just one, one more thing that weighs something. And... Uh, and so uh, I ended up buying some nail clippers, you know, towards the end of the Camino. But um, you probably do need something. Um, a lot of people bring all kinds of uh, blister treatment stuff. If you get the right shoes, you're not going to get a lot of blisters. Um, if you bring boots, then you better bring needles, thread, and compete, and all every possible thing uh, that you can bring because there's a good chance you'll get blisters and you need to treat them. But if you bring a nice a uh, lightweight pair of running shoes or trail runners, ultras are, are good shoes, um, then you're probably not going to get blisters. And the key is you got to stop, you know, every five miles or so, uh, stop at a cafe, take your shoes off, even maybe change your socks and take your socks off, take your shoes off and let your feet breathe and dry out um, so that the skin doesn't get too uh, soft and, and loose. Um, but uh, but other than that, you know, a needle and thread, you can you can bring that if you want. You can find it on the Camino, though. There's pharmacies everywhere, they, and they some of them actually help you treat the blisters. Uh, shower sandals. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, for, for if, if you want to wear sandals in the shower, it's nice 
if you get one that's sort of dual purpose where they're the sandals you're going to wear around town in the evening like crocs or something like that i don't really personally wear crocs i i, I know they're lightweight uh, i just don't like the looks of them and um, i've occasionally uh, used my uh, Keen sandals in the shower and they're, they're waterproof but they do hold on to the water for a while so if it's like a warm day and sunny out and, and I'm going to be walking around in the sun they're going to dry quickly so I don't worry about it but if it's in the evening I don't want wet sandals to be walking around and so uh, you just decide uh, shower sandals or not. Um, sunscreen, I don't use sunscreen, I don't like the chemicals, I don't like the greasy feeling um, so I don't use it at all, but I wear a long sleeve shirt and I pull the hood up and I put a put a hat on and I'm pretty well uh, protected. So uh, you decide for yourself on that. Toothbrush, toothpaste, obviously you need. Towel, I use a uh, microfiber dish towel. You can find them on Amazon. You just type in microfiber dish towel. They usually have them uh, in brown or white or blue or whatever. And uh, they work really well. They're dish towel size. Um, they soak up the water really fast and you can wring them out, uh, you know, halfway through and all that water just comes right out and it goes right back to drying really well. So super lightweight, packs up super small and it dries a lot faster than those camp towels that are like that chamois kind of a feeling. Um, so I, I use the microfiber towel, but you do need a towel. Uh, toilet paper or wipes. Um, I see a lot of people packing an entire roll of toilet paper. There are bathrooms all over the Camino. Every town you go into, every restaurant, they, ha they all have bathrooms, they all have toilet paper. It's very rare that you would walk into a place that does not have toilet paper. Now, you will occasionally, maybe, get stuck <laughs> between towns, you know, and emergency happens and you need something. So, uh, I don't bring a whole roll of toilet paper because you don't need that much. So what I bring is I bring a little travel size pack of wipes, a little little tiny one, and um, and I take the wipes out. I cut the package open, take the wipes out, and I lay them on the counter for a few days, and they dry out completely. So they're just they're just dry, and then I put them in a Ziploc baggie. And then if you do need them, you just uh, you pull a few out, and you can use your water bottle to wet them down, and then. That's, uh, that's it. Other than that, they're just a little tiny package. They weigh absolutely nothing, less than one ounce. And, and uh, I, I usually have a few. I don't normally include them in my packing list because they're really not necessary. Uh, for most people, you're going to have bathrooms at the times you need them. And, uh, but please, if you, if you end up needing to <laughs> go on the Camino, go off the road. You see all along the Camino, people are going right on the edge of the road and uh, you know, and then they just leave the paper everywhere and, and go into the bushes, go off the road, bury it if you can, um, and uh, try to keep the Camino clean. There's 300,000 people a year that use the Camino, and, uh, you know, we all appreciate it if you just clean up after yourself a little bit. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, Vaseline or some kind of blister stick um, comes in handy. There, um, <laughs> I don't use the uh, blister stick, and I don't usually put stuff on my feet. Um, sometimes I will just for moisture, but, uh, um, I use this, uh, I get a little jar of, they have them in the stores there, a little tiny jar. I think it's two ounces of Vaseline. It's got, um, like cocoa butter or something in it. It's uh, like a cocoa smelling, uh, Vaseline that I like. Um, so, but either one of those, um, let's see, pain medications, uh, aspirin, ibuprofen, uh, acetaminophen, they call it paracetamol over in Europe. So. Um, every pharmacy has all of this stuff. They have higher, higher dosages than we have here. You don't need to pack your bottle of it here. You can, as soon as you get there, you can go to any pharmacy and they sell it in the blister pack. So it's a nice thin, flat paper thing so you don't have a bottle, you know, uh, uh, you know rattling around in your pack. It's, um, you know, and what I usually do is I get, um, I get one of each. I get an aspirin, I get a... a uh, paracetamol and I get an ibuprofen and um, and they're for different things. Normally I like to take aspirin because I, I think it's less uh, damaging to things like your liver and kidneys. I know it affects the stomach. You try to take it on a full stomach, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a you know pharmacist by any means. So, um, but uh, but I use aspirin for just basic 
you know, aches and pains. I use ibuprofen for inflammation. I don't normally take any of these outside the Camino. Um, I only generally take any kind of medication when I'm there for that period of time, for that month that I'm, that I'm walking, because I think if you get inflammation, like I get it in my knees uh, and, and uh, a little bit in my feet uh, and my hips. And if, if you let the inflammation go and you keep walking, I think it does damage. I think it makes it worse because things swell up and then the bones are grinding on it. I think you need to control inflammation when it's happening. And, um, and so during that month, I take ibuprofen to keep the swelling down. It works great. Um, I take it a little preemptively. So I'll take it in the morning, um, you know, when I stop for breakfast and then, uh, and then I'll take another one uh, in the uh, afternoon, um, you know, to uh, keep things under control. Uh, and, um, and then uh, the uh, paracetamol, basically Tylenol, I, I would use for things like a sore throat or fever. Um, you know, if, if sometimes there's a flu or something going around the Camino. Like last time I got sick, I was running a high fever. And so I would take uh, the, the paracetamol for that. Uh, but you can get all that there. Uh, earbuds, wireless earbuds, uh, you know, I think you need them, um, you know, because you're not, you, you, you don't want to be just blasting your phone if you're watching something or listening to music. This is not that kind of a thing. If you're in the dorms, uh, you, you're expected to sort of, you know, maintain some quiet. So uh, bring your earbuds. Um, also, if you, uh, if you, uh, you know, I used to bring wired earbuds. Uh, but all the phones, they don't have the phone jack anymore. And sometimes you need to be listening to something at the same time you need to be charging your phone. So, uh, I'm, uh, advocating wireless, uh, earbuds. Now earplugs, uh, I, I bring them and I use them usually for the first week until I get used to, uh, being there. And then I don't really need them. I sleep fine without them. Uh, uh, eye mask for sleeping. Uh, some of these things are so small, you might as well just throw them in. I don't need the eye mask, but some people like to sleep with an eye mask. Um, I usually wear one of my hoodie shirts and I pull the hood over my head. Um, and that sort of blocks out a lot of the, first of all, the hood helps to, uh, helps to keep the earplugs in. Uh, the outdoor research shirts have sort of a tight hood, so they keep the earbuds help to keep the earplugs in place, but, uh, and then an eye mask if you, if you want to bring it, it's not a big deal. Um, flashlight or headlamp, a lot of people bring it. It's not necessary. I don't think, um, you know, in the springtime, if you're going in the spring or summer, it gets light pretty early. Um, and unless you're going to get up in the middle of the night and start walking, I, you know, I don't know why you would want to, uh, one of the best things about the Camino is that is the scenery. And if you're walking in the dark all the time, you're missing everything. So why would you do that? So, you know, take it easy. Uh, wait till the sun comes up. Um, but uh, your phone generally has a flashlight on it anyway, so you can get by with that. I went in September last year, and it gets light pretty late in September. It's like 8.30, you know, by the time the sun's coming up, uh, something like that, as I recall. So I would walk in the dark. Um, but I didn't have a headlamp or anything. It was just the starlight and there's sort of some ambient light and, and generally there's some size of moon out um, that, uh, and you're walking on a dirt road that has little bits of quartz and stuff like that that reflects and, and it just looks lighter. You can see it if you just walk without the, without the headlamp for a while, um, you find that uh, it's not that hard to navigate. Um, and then uh, if you come to a crossroad, you turn on your cell phone light uh, for a moment to see which way the arrow points, and, and it's fine. Uh, let's see, needle and thread I already uh, talked about. Bring it if you want. Uh, you need your passport. You need your phone. You need your phone charger. Uh, you need a European power adapter, sunglasses. Uh, trekking poles is another optional item. A lot of people like them. Uh, if you do bring them, please, please, please put the rubber tips on. There's nothing more annoying than walking around a bunch of people that are, you know, tapping away on concrete, um, <clears throat> you know, with metal tips. Uh, you know, most of the Camino has, uh, even, even the dirt roads, the farm roads are basically uh, dirt with uh, rocks, um, you know, like cobblestones and stuff that are that have been embedded in there to make the road last longer. Uh, and so it's just the constant ticking of, of poles when, you know, when you don't need them. Because a lot of those people brought their poles 
and a lot of and those same people are you know they've shipped their pack forward so they're only carrying a small day pack and for some reason have have poles but you know most of the Camino is just flat road and if you're if you're packing so much stuff that that you need poles to balance with then you might be packing a little too heavy but bring the poles just put rubber tips on them everybody will appreciate you for that um, and then water bottle I never really include my uh, the water bottle in my pack because um, I don't have like a reusable water bottle that I bring um, you know but you want it to be lightweight if you do bring one um, and uh, you know some people use those plastic or aluminum ones I just get the disposable ones I get like the I like the smart water water bottles and I get the 500 milliliter ones um, the smart water are a little heavier plastic they're a little taller and skinnier and um, so they fit a little better and they hold up pretty well and I just refill those so I use that um, for several weeks at a time um, you know until you know there's until i get to like leon or something i'll use the same bottle until i get to leon and you just fill it up at the fountains there's there's fountains every you know five kilometers every town you go into there's a water fountain that you can refill it but but i don't include it because uh, most people don't when they're doing their base weight the pack base weight um but uh uh 500 milliliters of uh of water weighs about one pound uh, you know, weighs 500 grams. So, um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, that's, that's it for, uh, most of my pack. Um, but yeah, it depends, it depends on the season. Um, yeah, that's everything. It depends on the season. If you're going in wintertime, you need a heavy sleeping bag, uh, cause you know, sometimes the places aren't really heated that well. Um, they, you know, you'll get into some of these dorms and, um, it's concrete walls, it's a window, <laughs> you know, that's letting, you know, the reflecting cold air inward. And, um, um, and so it can get cold in there. And also there's, there's very few people that walk in the winter time. So you don't have a whole bunch of bodies in there warming the room. The room might be half empty. And, uh, in, in most cases you're staying in a lot of the municipal albergues. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, so they're not, uh, you know, generally running a lot of heat in some of the places. Sometimes they do, but, but uh, you want to be prepared. Um, so, you know, obviously wintertime you need pants, you need maybe a base layer, you need a heavy jacket um, and, um, you know, hat and gloves and, and the, whole, the whole thing. Um, but summertime, you know, you bring a pair of pants just to, so you can get into a cathedral, but it's, it's so warm hot even um, that uh, you're just going to wear shorts in a in a t-shirt all the time and um, so you know so when I go later I might go um, I have to time it where I you know you can stay there three months at a time uh, you know so I'll go for a month and a half and then and then time it so that I can go back and I don't run over over time um, but uh, maybe the end of August or something um, when it's still warm but I'll just bring my silk liner shorts uh, you know, my sort of lightweight, uh, um, I've got these, uh, really lightweight, uh, Adidas, uh, pants that fit over my shorts. Um, you know, so something like that is, you know, if you really want to kind of go minimal. So my pack will weigh less than, it'll, it'll weigh maybe two kilos, less than four pounds. If, if I do it that way, I'll just bring a little day pack, um, and that'll be it. Um, so, uh, so that's it. If you think of anything else, put it in the comments. I'll, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy to answer if, if you get any other questions about the seasons. I know I was confused. Um, you know, I, I, my last one was the first time I went in the fall. Um, you know, so I'd gone to other parts of Spain, uh, in, in August before my first trip to Spain, um, uh, was August to September, but it was in Southern Spain. And, and also I was going down into Morocco and, and primarily just I, I went to, uh, uh, you know, down to, uh, what is it, Malaga, Marbella. Um, I went to Gibraltar, um, Sevilla, um, Madrid, Barcelona, um, Valencia. And then I got down into Morocco on that trip, went, went to uh, Casablanca, Marrakech, or, uh, uh yeah, no, and then and then I went to Tarifa uh, in in Spain. So so it's kind of all over the place, but that was more southern, and it was warm, uh, and I just wore shorts the whole time. Uh, but um, so this last trip, I was, um, 
you know, I knew that September would be kind of nice, but I, but I wasn't sure at what point um, it would start raining. Uh, and it starts raining generally in October. It's a lot like Oregon, where I lived for a long time. Um, that, um, you know, in about the middle of October, it starts raining. And uh, so, you, you know, you need to kind of think about that. But September was just beautiful, sunny, like it's 70 degrees every day, 70 to 80 degrees every day, um, you know, Fahrenheit. Um, and um, so, uh, yeah, just beautiful day. So if you go at the end of, like the very end of August and finish by the end of September, you know, you probably don't need a sleeping bag at that at that point, just maybe a, a sleeping bag liner. Um, you know, something really lightweight uh, is is probably fine. Uh, so that's it. Um, again, if, if you have any other questions or any other suggestions, put it in the comments. And if and if uh, if um, you're not subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.